again, everybody, and welcome back to another class here with、uh, B1 Intermediate English. I'm Bradford, and hello to、uh, Barbara, Enrique, Peter, I saw, Aitana, hello,、uh, V, welcome back, and of course, Ugo.、Um, thank you, everybody, for stopping by and visiting me again. I hope that today we can clear up any confusion that we may have with、um, the past simple and the present perfect we're going to talk about today. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, doubts, comments, or suggestions, you can put them in the chat box、uh, while we're live. And if not, if you're watching this as a video、uh, later on, you can put them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer any and all、uh, questions you have. You can also reach me via email at、um, bradford at orangeidiomas.com. I will show you that at the end of the video、um, or the stream or whatever you want to call it today. So, today I wanted to talk about, or I want to talk about,、um, a common mistake that sometimes people make when、uh, talking about events in the past. And I want to clear up when we should use the present perfect and when we should use the past simple. Okay, because in Spanish, sometimes you can use or you get confused about which one to use because in Spanish it sounds a little bit strange depending on the situation. So、um, I've got my setup here a little backwards today, so I might have to take a second to sort of figure out where everything is.、Um, let me see. Yes, okay. So, I can go in over here and boom, there we are. Okay, brilliant. Now,、um, I assume everybody can hear just fine. If you have any problems hearing me, let me know. Other than that, we're going to get started. I need to move this guy over here. For some reason, my program doesn't want to be working very well today, but. It is what it is, I guess. All right, and I'll put you guys up there. Okay, so、um, as I said today, I want to look at the past simple versus the present perfect. Let's review very quickly.、Um, I don't think that the class today is going to be very long. It all depends on you and how much you want to participate and how much you want to、uh, <laughs> type. Yeah, unfortunately,、um, unlike Zoom and Meets and all of these things, this isn't as interactive as it could be, but it's not bad for a free course. While we're in quarantine, yeah, we, we can take advantage of the time. So、uh, here we are. Let's take a look. Preliminary B1. All right, let's clear up the past simple and the present perfect. So going quickly、uh, over the past simple. We know that we use the past simple as we mentioned last week、uh, when we talk about a finished action in the past. And we often say, where's my, where's my pointer? We often say when that action happened. And that's, that's the key today, yeah, is the when. So these words that we use, like ago or last week or before, after, all of these words. We're not going to use today. We don't want to use these words. Okay, so these, let me rephrase that. We don't want to use them when we're speaking in the present perfect. Okay, and that we're going to see right now. So, this is quick review. I don't think there are any problems with this. If anybody has any doubt or anything、uh, related to the past simple for a finished action in the past, let me know now. If not, we're going to move on. So, how does that, you know, on Wednesday, last week,、um, this morning, how do these affect us when we're talking about an action or an experience more specifically in the past? Because if we have experiences, obviously those experiences happened at some point in the past, yesterday, last week, last year, when I was a child. However, if we speak only about the experience itself, okay, so we're only talking about 
it. Not when, not where, not how, how, <laughs> okay, not why, but only the experience itself, then we use the present perfect in English, okay? And here we can talk about, as I was mentioning, an experience in the past. So, for example, um, going to France or eating a pizza, okay, or seeing a film. Uh, these happened in the past, but we want to emphasize the experience. That's the important thing, is the experience itself, not the time, not when it happened. Um, the time expressions that we use in the present perfect are ever, never, not ever, and you can talk about um, frequency or the number of times that you have had that um, experience, okay? So the number of times you have been f uh, to France, for example, okay? Um, Ugo is asking about since and for, and yes, Ugo, we do use since and for with the present perfect, but we're not talking about that usage today, okay? So um, when, when we, uh, we can get into it in a little bit, okay? Actually, there is one small thing I can show you about for and since and how that relates to the past simple as well. But right now, I want to concentrate on experiences and what we use um, and how that contrasts with the past simple, okay? So give me a minute, and when, when we finish up with this, um, I'll try to remember to talk about how specifically for, the word for, F-O-R, can be confused with the present perfect, in the present perfect, and in the past simple, okay? So let's pay attention to that. Um, here, never and not ever are synonyms, okay? So when you want to say that you haven't had an experience, like, for example, Moscow. I've never been to Moscow. I have never been to Moscow. Or I haven't ever been to Moscow. I've never or I haven't ever. Depends on how you want to construct the sentence, but they mean exactly the same thing. Um, they are completely synonymous. Okay, so ever, never, not ever, and then once, twice, or three times, five times, to infinity, really. We do not use past time expressions, so the expressions from before we're not going to use. I have seen this movie yeah, the experience I have had, but we do not say when. If you say, I have seen this movie yesterday, well, that is incorrect English, okay? That's not correct English. You do not say yesterday or last week or last summer if you use this construction. If you use, or another example in a question, have you been to France last year? Have you been to France last year? This is an incorrect sentence, yeah? We cannot use the expression, the time expression, last year or last week or 10 years ago or anything like that. No past simple time expressions when we're using the present perfect to talk about experiences, okay? We use the past simple, and this is where we get how they work together the present perfect, and the past simple. We use the past simple to find out more information about the experience that we're talking about, okay? If I'm only interested in the experience, for example, I ask you, oh, have you ever been to Paris? And you say, well, no, I haven't. Now, I have the information about you going to Paris in your life, and I know now that it's not that you haven't had that experience. You don't have it, okay? That's all the information I wanted. I don't have to ask you any more information. Have you ever been to London? Oh, yes, I have. Oh, great. I've never been to London. Can I ask you some questions about London? Yeah, sure. 
When did you go to London? Where did you go to London? Can you recommend a good hotel? What's good to see? Now I can ask you about that specific experience in the past simple or any other tense. If I want to know the present tense, can you recommend a good restaurant or something like that? But if I want to find out more information about the experience, then I use the past simple. And that's how these work together. Okay. What is the sticking point, the hard part, the trick? Well, it's this right here. Okay. A lot of people cannot remember that you do not use the past time uh, expressions with the present perfect. If you want to know, if you want to know about last year and me going to France, well, the important thing is not going to France, but you, in, the information you want is last year. You must use past simple. So I could ask, did you go to France last year? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. And blah, 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 blah. So I'm being more specific and then I use the um, past simple instead of the pa present perfect. Okay. I think that's pretty clear. Um, I hope that these uh, explanations can are, are quite clear. If you don't understand something, you can uh, put it in the chat box. I want to do one quick uh, exercise, and then I want to talk about uh, the four, which Ugo brought up about using uh, the present perfect with four and the, pre and the past simple with four. Um, have you ever? Have you ever? Okay. Have you ever is a very common construction for the present perfect. Have you ever, if we want to know about an experience in your life. Have you ever been to Rome? Have you ever been to Rome? And this is a, a here's another stickler, another, another um, difficult thing to remember for the Spanish. Um, have you been to Rome? You do not say, have you been in Rome? Which is, in Spanish, you use the preposition in, in, uh, en, in, in Roma, in Londres, but in English we use to. Have you ever been to Rome? Have you ever made a snowman? Okay. Um, feel free. I want you to simply write the question. Any of these prompts you can use um, to write the question and say, okay, thank you, Ugo, and I'm glad you made that mistake, okay? <laughs> have you ever gone to Rome is a mistake, okay? If you're asking about the action of uh, um, traveling to Rome and doing sightseeing or whatever, you have to use the participle been, B-E-E-N, okay? Have you ever been to Rome? Okay. Um, and why? Why is that? That's, that is a little bit of a difficult thing to explain. And I think I might have to um, try my handy, my, um, I think I can go in and I can turn on my whiteboard. Have you ever made a snowman? Yes, very good, Santi. Right, let's go back. Let me see if I can turn on my whiteboard. There we are. So I'm going to turn on my whiteboard and see if I can explain something to you very quickly. Okay, let's see if I'm here. Hello. Okay, here I am. Yes. Okay. So let me tell you a, about um, go to uh, where, wherever you want to go. And f please forgive my writing. I'm not, I'm not doing this very well. I, I'm not a very good writer when it comes to these, uh, pr these, this peripherals. So we're talking about going to Rome. Oh, 
the, the O's are going to kill me. Okay, go to Rome. So the question is, have you ever, and I want to say, been to Rome? Have you ever been to Rome? Santi asked, or Santi mentioned, have you ever gone to Rome? That is not uh, a correct sentence because if you're talking about going and coming back, then we talk about the experience of being in Rome, even if the, the infinitive is go. Okay. Oh, sorry, Santi. Or Ugo, sorry. Ugo, Santi is Ugo's brother. I'm thinking, right, sorry, Ugo, I apologize. I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, when we say that someone, for example, he's... gone to Rome, okay, if I want to say for, let's say, let me get my eraser out here and I can erase this. This eraser should be bigger, but oh well. I want to say, for example, uh, where is, um, where is Mark, for example, where's my marker? Here we go. So I go, where's Where's Mark? And then you tell me, oh, he's gone to Rome. He's not here. He's in Rome. And we use the present perfect to say that he's gone to Rome. He is still in Rome now. We're not talking about the experience of having been to Rome. If I say that he's been to Rome... Now we're saying, well, he's gone and he's come back. Okay, he's had the experience of being in Rome. So go to Rome about the experience is this one. That's supposed to be a star. <laughs> okay, he's been to Rome. Have you ever been to Rome? Have you ever been to London? Have you ever been to Castellon? Okay, is that clear? I can get some thumbs up. And we can say, yes, that's clear. The difference between he's gone to Rome and he's been to Rome. Yeah, give me some thumbs up and then I'll know that that's quite clear. Sorry, Ugo, again. If I make that mistake again, I, I really apologize, yeah. <laughs> I've seen the two of you forever. I get you confused. Or messed up in my head. Okay, good. It seems clear. Everybody seems to be saying that that's clear. Okay, so I can go back then to my presentation here. Okay. Wonderful. And that needs to go away. All right. So we don't want this here anymore. Go away. All right. Um, so give me some more, uh, examples. Okay. So the participle, Ugo mentioned, have you ever flown in a helicopter? Uh, remember Ugo that the participle of flow, uh, fly flown is F L O W N. Have you ever slept more than 12 hours? Very good V. Have you ever made a snowman? Have you ever, okay, Mohammed, be careful. Have you ever been to Spain? Have you ever been to Spain? Spain? That's a good one. Um, yes, I live in Spain, so I have been to Spain. I have been in Spain for a very long time. Have you ever seen a ghost? Excellent, V. Yeah. Have you ever met a famous person? Excellent, Barbara. Okay, so... Have you ever? Alguna vez has... Da, 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 da. Okay, so we're talking about experiences. At some time in your life, did you have this experience? Right? Did this happen to you? Have you ever watched a film in English? Have you ever cried during a sad movie? Um, good. I think that this is pretty clear. Okay, so let me ask you, and you can answer. Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Have you ever swum in the Pacific Ocean? Have you ever swum in the Pacific Ocean? Yes or no? Yes, I have. No, I haven't. 
Have you ever swum in the Pacific Ocean? Have you ever swum in the Pacific Ocean? No, I haven't. Very good. V. Okay, V. Yes, absolutely. Yes, I have. Yeah, if you want to make it a short answer question or a short answer. Have you ever bought something over 100 euros? No, I haven't. Very good. Aitana. Yes, I have also uh, swum in the Pacific Ocean. Peter says, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. But I imagine everybody would love to swim in the Pacific Ocean at some point, no? Go to Hawaii, for example, or Los Angeles to swim in the Pacific Ocean. That would be very nice. Have you ever, um, how about, have you ever touched a snake? 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 Yes or no? I think I have. I have touched a snake. I didn't like it very much. <laughs> I have to tell you. I think I was maybe 12 years old or something. We went to the zoo on a field trip with school and we went to the snake house and somebody had like a very big snake, whatever, anaconda or boa constrictor or something. And I remember every, oh, touch this. Oh, it was strange. In Marrakesh, okay. Uh, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. Oh, hey, yes, I have. Very good. Barbara, did you like um, did you like it when you touched the snake? Mohammed, did you like touching the snake? I think they, they feel very weird. It's not, okay, it's completely natural, but it doesn't feel like something that's natural to me. I've never felt anything like that. Uh, no, yeah, okay. You, no, I didn't. Okay, I, or no, I don't like touching snakes. Or no, I didn't like that experience of touching a snake. Yeah, me neither. Um, what about, okay, next one. Have you ever, last one. Have you ever broken a bone? Have you ever broken a bone? Have you ever broken a bone? I have broken three bones, I think, in my life. I've broken, I've broken this elbow, this wrist, and this wrist. Not at the same time, yeah? Three different times, yeah? Um, but I've broken, what's a bone? Okay, a bone is like the, what connects, it's your skeleton. Yeah, you have the cranium and the femur and the tibia and the, I don't remember the name of the other one, um, Ugo. Yeah, do you understand? It's the hard part that keeps your body up and down. <laughs> White inside. No, I haven't. Yes, I have. V, what, bro what bone have you broken? V, what bone have you broken? Maybe maybe your forearm or your leg or your clavicle. This one, the clavicle often uh, sports people break this. Yeah, if you fall down badly or something or, or your ankle. Yeah, if you're a basketball player or a, a runner. Uh, the same three times. Okay, ooh, that's a lot. It's not fun to break a bone. So have you ever, that's the question. A finger, yeah, ooh, that sounds painful as well. Yeah, finger or nose, sometimes they often get broken. Um, not fun. All right, so here we are going to contrast the present perfect with ram and goats? I don't understand. <laughs> Mohammed, I don't understand. Oh, yes, I've broken the nose. Okay, ah, here. That's very good, Ugo. Um, Ugo, remember, well, Ugo and everybody, remember that body parts in English are 
possessive. They're mine or yours. So when we talk about the nose, we talk about my nose, my arm, my finger. Okay. So Ugo, I've broken my nose. There you go. Very good. Um, in, in, that's a difference between Spanish and English. Okay. It's a very small mistake, but it's a, it's a mistake that uh, a native English speaker or someone that's very fluent will pick up on. So, you know, oh, I have a headache or my head hurts. My head hurts. Okay. My stomach hurts. Um, things like that. Okay. Um, I've burnt my nose. Yeah, sunburned. I've sunburnt my nose. My nose. Okay, so remember that's p uh, possessive. So here we have some uh, of the experiences from before. And for more information, we use the past simple. So for example, sleep more than 12 hours. Have you ever slept for more than 12 hours at one time? Well, yes, I have. Okay. When did you sleep more than 12 hours? Well, I think I was 15. And why did you sleep more than 12 hours? Oh, I was so tired because I played uh, two football games with my friends and then I was studying all night. And when I fell asleep, I just slept and slept and slept and I didn't wake up for 12 hours. Aitana says, I've broken my eyebrow. I don't think you are saying what you want to say, Aitana. You cannot break your eyebrow. Um, your eyebrow is the hair that is above your eye, okay? It's this hair here. Yeah, this is your eyebrow. You have one eyebrow here and one eyebrow here. I don't think I don't think you can break your eyebrow. You can cut your eyebrow if you have some clippers or some scissors, but you can't break your eyebrow. Um you can break your eye socket, okay, which is the the hole where your eye is, and I'll put that here in the in the chat. Um your eye socket. Your eye socket is, is this hole of bone that your eye goes in, but your, your eyebrow is the hair here. You can't, you can't break that. Uh, not in English anyway. <laughs> Sorry, Aitana, that sounds just a little funny. I've broke, I like the grammar though. The grammar's perfect. I have broken my eyebrow. The grammar's perfect. So um, I want you to tell me in two sentences or three sentences, uh, an experience you had, you've had using one of the prompts that you see here. Okay. So sleep more than 12 hours, seen a ghost, swim in the Pacific ocean, break a bone. Tell me the experience using the present perfect. And then tell me one piece of additional information about that experience using the past simple. So for example, I have slept more than 12 hours. I was 15 years old and I was uh, in my bed, for example, yeah? Or um, I was on TV um, because, uh, let's see, I was on TV, yes. I was a teenager and it was for a telethon. A telethon is when you go on TV and you ask for money for a cause like uh, muscular dystrophy or MS or some disease. Um, I was on TV. I was on TV here in Valencia. I've been on uh, TV here in Valencia. I, I was on Canal No when it was Canal No. Um, oh, I think, when was I on Canal No? Probably in 2011, more or less. Uh, I was at the Portland Ale House and we were doing um, some intercambios, yeah, some ex in language exchanges. And the, the Valencian television station came to the pub where we were doing the, the, inter the exchange 
and they interviewed me for the exchange, okay? So that's a perfect example, yeah? I've been on television, and um, and that's when it happened, yeah? That's what happened, yeah? I've lost in a supermarket. Okay, so, Ugo, don't forget the main verb here is to be, yeah? So I've been lost. I've been lost in a supermarket because here lose or lost is the adjective to be lost um i've bought something over 100 euros in the quarantine because i wanted to work out at home ah perfect enrique wonderful absolutely um yeah spot on very good what did you buy what did you buy yeah i want more information what did you buy enrique to work out at home how much was it? Was it very expensive? Like very, very expensive? Over 100 euros? That's expensive. But was it over 500 euros? You didn't finish the sentence. Okay, Ugo, no problem. Um, so, Mohamed, Aitana, V, Barbara, feel free to jump in. Tell me about the experience you, you've had. So, I've bought something over 100 euros. And then answer... Some of these questions, the the who, the what, the where, the when, and give me some more information in the chat box. I've been lost in a supermarket. I was seven years old and I was with all my family. Okay. How did you get lost, Ugo? How did you get lost? Were you playing video games and then they went somewhere else, like in the Carrefour or... Did you uh, look for uh, something and you couldn't find your family again? Ah, Mohammed, I think I... Oh, no. I bought a bench, a bench and some weights to keep fit. To keep in fit? No, to keep fit. To keep fit fit ah very good enrique good purchase good purchase i didn't remember i don't remember i only remember that okay fair enough we'll go no problem no problem i don't remember yeah because now you're trying to remember so i don't remember you only remember that you were lost okay very good i think Mohammed, I've been lost in Marina near the near the beach. Okay, so near, no two with near. So near the beach, near my house, near the school, near Valencia, but not near two. Okay, so be careful with that. That's a very common mistake. I've cried during a sad movie because I'm a very sensitive person. Okay, what was the movie, Barbara, that made you cry the most? I think I I don't usually cry at movies, but I remember I, I have cried at a movie, um, at a sad movie, during a sad movie. Um, it was an extremely sad movie. I cried during um, Schindler's List. I remember that. Coco. Coco? Like the movie about the gorilla singer? Um, okay. <laughs> if Oh, no. Coco was not about the... Was that about the gorilla singer, or was that about the the dead, the day of the dead in Mexico? I can never remember. I think it's the date. Ah, Barbara, you'll tell me. Was that the one about the day of the dead, or about the gorilla singer? What was the name of the one that the the gorilla that wanted to be a singer? I thought that was Coco. I can't remember. I'm not so good with animated movies anymore. My my children, no, it was about a boy. In, okay, yeah, a boy in Mexico with the Day of the Dead. Um, my children are older now, so I don't watch as many cartoon movies as I used to. I used to watch all cartoon movies, um, but now I don't watch them so much. Okay, I want to go back to um, to my my writer. 
And I want to show you what Ugo was talking about before. When Ugo asked me about um, the form, ah, it's Sing. Okay, the one with the the one with the gorilla that wants to be a singer is called Sing. Okay, well that makes sense. Ugo was asking me before. Where's my um, hello? Okay, Ugo was. Why is it not working? Oh, great. Now my, uh, my mouse pad is not working. Well, isn't that just great? Maybe like this. Hello. Oh, dear. Ah, there we go. Okay, I got it. So, Ugo was asking me before about four. All right. I've cried during a series, a television series. Okay, television series. We don't say serie. Serie, that's Spanish. Aitana, so be careful with that. Um, you cried during a TV series. Yeah, that could... I'm trying to think of uh, what's the saddest TV series I ever watched, but I can't remember. Um, that's okay. Crying makes us human, right? Um, Ugo asked me about four, okay? And if we use four differently um, in the... Well, he, he said four and since for the past simple and the present perfect. And yeah, there is a very big difference. And a lot of people um, can uh, make a mistake with this. And we use it um, with time expressions. It's a time expression thing. And we can say, for example... Um, Two years. Let's say two years, all right? And I want to use it. I have lived in Valencia, and I'm going to just use VLC, uh, for two years. We all know that. And I lived in, oh dear, that's not so good. These aren't very, it's not very intuitive. I, I need more practice. I lived in Valencia for two years. Now, here, everything is the same, except this is the past simple, right? This is the past simple, and this is the present perfect. So what's the difference? Here we have four two years, and here we have four two years. But in Spanish, they're very, very different. Okay, they're translated completely differently. What's the difference in meaning in English? Can you write in the chat box what you think? Let's call this sentence one, and let's call this sentence two. You can say, in sentence one, it means blah, blah, blah. blah. In sentence two, it means blah, 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 blah. Do you know the difference between sentence one and sentence two? There is a very big difference, and the difference is uh, present perfect and past simple. And very good Ugo, did I say Santi again by any chance? Very good Ugo for pointing out or for asking about for and since. Don't translate for me, Ugo. Um, and no, that's incorrect, actually. You wouldn't want to say he vivido. You don't say that in, in, in Spanish for this context. Um, no. So explain to me in English what the difference is. Ugo or anybody else, right? I don't need or we don't want a translation. Um, yes, I'm sure that everybody or most everybody in the in watching now is in Spain or from Spain or probably even my students mostly. But in the case that some people are not in Spain or do not speak Spanish, Tell me in English what the difference is between sentence one and sentence two. What is the difference? So Enrique says sentence one means that I'm still living in Valencia. Sentence two means that I don't live in Valencia anymore. 
Absolutely. Very good. Okay. Enrique, you hit the the you hit the 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 answer right on the head. The nail. Yeah, the expression is to hit the nail on the head. Yeah, darle en el clavo. Um, uh, so, in fact, and Barbara, I'm glad that you got in here, be, or you mentioned that, because no, in fact, in number one, in sentence one, it means that the action is still continuing. It's present perfect. We started in the past, two years ago, and we are still living in Valencia now. I'm living in Valencia now. I've lived in Valencia for two years, or I've been living in Valencia for two years. It's still true. Here, yeah, is that it's in the past and it's finished. I lived in Valencia for two years. And if you want, we can. I can make this true uh, for me, which might... Oh, shoot. Oh, well. I'll make it true for me now. Let's say I've... been living in, oh dear, Valencia for um, 2019 years. I've been living in Valencia, or I've lived in Valencia for 19 years. Um, I lived in Buffalo. That's New York uh, for 23 years, more or less. Okay, so I lived in Buffalo, New York for 23 years. I've been living in Valencia or I've lived, we can say as well, because that's both of them are correct. I've been living or I've lived in Buffalo or in Valencia. Uh, for 19 years. I lived in Buffalo, New York for 23 years. I don't live in Buffalo now. It's in the past and it's finished. But I do, yes, live in Valencia. So I've lived. And here, if you want to know the Spanish, uh, and I know I just yelled at Hugo, uh, this is desde hace, and here is durante. Okay? So there's a difference in translation between these two. And this one means it's still happening, and this one is that it's finished, okay? Barbara, is that clear? I think that's pretty clear. If not, then let me know. Or if someone else has a question. Excellent. Good. Thank you, Barbara. Okay. Um, has anybody else got a question about the past simple? And of course, I'm sorry, we could have, I could have written in here um, since uh, 2001. And that's, that's the same desde. Yeah. But here I'm talking about the duration of time that I lived in, uh, that I lived in Buffalo. Okay. So this doesn't change. You cannot use um, since in the past simple. Okay. Um, at least not in this way, not in this way. Okay. Um, good. So that I think if, if it's all clear and everybody is pretty comfortable and doesn't have, uh, any questions or any examples or any, um, doubts about that, then let me, uh, Oh, look, I can write on my screen. I forgot about that. Um, that's it for today. I mean, I only wanted to cover this small detail because there were a couple of things that many people get wrong, which for, to be uh, for Ben, yeah, been to London and not go to London. Have you been to London? Or I'm sorry, not be in London. We don't say in, we say to. I've been to London, I've been to Paris, I've been to Madrid. Okay? Um, the difference between been and gone, been and gone, he's gone to Rome, he's not here. He's been to Rome, he's, he's gone and come back. Um, the difference with the for in the present, sim present perfect and the past simple. And then when to use past simple is it we, when we want more information. We use the past simple. 
So, um, yeah. Oh no, I'm I'm in the writing mode now. How do I get out of here? I think I have to. There we go. That's it then. Basically, it's a short lesson today. Um, let me switch over to talk to you here. Yeah, it's a short lesson today. There's nothing really too complicated about the lesson. Um, I think that some of my lessons have been uh, on the easy side and some have been on the more difficult side. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming. Please have a safe week. And I will see you again next week. Or maybe if you are um, a follower of me on, on the B2 class and the C1 class tomorrow, then yes, there is class tomorrow. I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be another difficult class. I know last week it was very difficult for people. I think we will review what we saw um, again so that we can clear that up. And if I don't see you tomorrow, then have a safe week and I'll see you next week. Okay. Bye-bye. Oi, can you do the live in you now? See you tomorrow. What do you mean, Mohammed? before I sign off? What do you mean? Can I do the live in... Bye-bye, Barbara. Bye-bye, Enrique. Ah, you now is a website? Um, I don't know you now, but I can look into it, okay? I'll look into it and see what it is, and um, maybe I can study it as an option. Um, I think you're suggesting instead of YouTube, it's possible. I did this only because it's the easiest. It was the quickest and the fastest thing that I could set up um, in such short notice uh, because of the quarantine and everything. So I will look into you now and see. That sounded weird. I'll look into you now um, and see what that's all about. Okay, great. Thank you. Have a good week and see you, uh, see you later. Okay, bye-bye.